Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So for this week, we're moving on to protein bioinformatics. So, well, we talk about bioinformatics there are, uh, well, of course it would involve computer and sometimes in the form of simulation, but for protein bioinformatics, there are certain things that, well, only protein, okay, could be done. Okay, I mean, for certain tools and certain application, only protein could be done. For example, okay, if we talk about homology modeling, uh, docking. Okay, so only protein okay, could be used for docking of homology modeling and not your DNA or RNA. First and foremost, we go into homology modeling. So this is just to recap back. I'm sure, well, I know you have covered this in last semester from, from your bioinformatics class. So I'm not going to dwell too much. Okay, it's just more or less refreshing back again okay, what you have learned and specifically going okay, into its application and how it should be done or has been done. First and foremost, okay, so just a bit of introduction, again, like I said, just to refresh back your mind. So we know that this involves techniques, okay, so there are lots of techniques, okay, for modeling modeling to compare protein, okay, whereby you model a protein, this is whereby you construct, okay, an unknown atomic resolution model of your target protein. So usually this is from its amino acid sequence and sometimes an experimental 3D structure. And this is of course from a related homologous protein, which could be used as a template whereby you could get it from PDB or some other databases. PDB is the most common. Or probably you have done your wet lab and you have constructed it by X-ray crystallography. You can proceed with uh, homology modeling. So homology modeling, because this is bioinformatics, so it is based on prediction. And the prediction is via 3D dimension, 3D structure. Of the given protein sequence so meaning that okay, if you have a target protein okay, so the target protein okay, is usually derived from the amino acid sequence of a homologous template protein okay so like i said this is either obtained from x-ray or nmr structure uh, like what most uh, that has been obtained or uploaded in pdb so if similarity sequence between the target sequence and the template sequence is detected so structural similarity can be assumed only that can be assumed so in general, uh, around 30% of sequence identity is required okay, to generate a useful model. Now, the concept of homology modeling is actually simple. If you have an unknown structure of a protein, okay, so you need to find out a template that is suitable to it okay, based on the sequence. Okay, and you could do this via BLAST. And then you could do some sequence alignment and determine how much percentage of similarities okay, that could be obtained. And then from there, you could just okay, construct a 3D structural model. So homology modeling is always based on 3D structure model or constructing 3D model based on a template. So a template is crucial for homology modeling. So overall, okay, you need a target sequence. Okay? So then, okay, this is what you okay, get a lot of the tools, okay, over, uh, I mean, online, okay, or even if you have your own software, this is what they do, okay, they would recognize the template, okay, via template recognition, they would do the alignment, okay, if you have more than one, okay, but usually one is enough, and then, okay, they will generate backbone, okay, to determine, okay, which one, okay, would make up, okay, the protein, okay, the backbone, and does it have a domain, which domains, and so forth, so, then okay, we will proceed with loop modeling. Okay, loop modeling. Okay, which means that okay, it would determine okay, the loops involved. So we know that proteins have loops and whatnot. Okay, so that could be okay, the binding site sometimes or active site. Okay, for docking and also for some other purposes. Apart from that, okay, it put, uh, basically we could also determine side chain modeling. Okay, if available, not all proteins have side chain. Okay, and before you could get okay, your protein or basically a, a model of a protein okay usually it is optimized optimization is of course okay, by the algorithm from each software so they have different algorithms so you need to just play around with your chosen software and then the model will be validated so model validation okay usually is done okay after you have got your model uh, uh, from the homology modeling so you could use some other software kind of like this like ramachandran plot okay, to determine whether uh, your model is acceptable or not okay because sometimes okay, you have to to bear in mind okay, all these steps are done via computer simulation so it, it is just prediction and probably along the way something wrong could occur hence it needs to be verified so validation is of course a crucial aspect in bioinformatics same goes for rna and also dna so the steps to homology modeling again refreshing back your mind 
there are seven steps very simple actually okay so first of course you need to select your template okay this is for recognition and alignment then okay for target template alignment okay you need to have the alignment correction okay and backbone generation okay this is to determine okay the base of the protein this will be followed by loop modeling okay, from the previous slides again okay? uh and chain site chain modeling plus the optimization again okay? this is where your model is constructed so later on again okay, the last step again okay, is something that has to be done very crucial is to validate your model okay to for you to assess okay, whether it is susceptible or not to be used because most of the time when we generate a model by homology modeling we would want to use it for simulation or for docking so it is crucial that the model is a good model now for the first step okay so this is actually what occurs okay oh sorry so template recognition and initial alignment so whereby your template is being recognized and selected okay so of course search is based from the pdb and this is done usually based on homologous protein with of course determined structures you should use simple sequence alignment programs such as blast or faster okay, as the percentage identity of course between the target sequence and a possible template would be high enough in the safe zone for the detection of these programs so to obtain a list of hits the modeling template and of course the corresponding alignments of the program usually compares the query sequence to all the sequence of known structure in the pdb using mainly two matrices so the matrices are a residue okay, exchange matrix and an alignment matrix so secondly okay, when it do or basically when the alignment is being corrected okay sometimes okay this is what happened okay it usually it's difficult to align two sequences especially if the percentage of similarity is not that high okay but they will try okay, to do it somehow nonetheless okay and the percentage if it is very low okay usually they have to align find okay where where which region okay where it is the most likely uh, similar Okay, then they will build up from that. So, but from that, again, okay, one can you then use other sequences from multiple proteins and also find solution. If you find that your percentage of uh, sequence identity is very low, uh, what we mean by very low okay, is usually if it is below 70%. Okay? So if it is below 70%, usually it is quite low. I mean, usually for percentage similarity, it would be desirable okay, for it to be 90% and above. So if it is below 70, then usually it's quite hard okay, for you to, to, to have a good model later on. So you need to find other sequences from homologous protein okay, to get a better percentage. So later on, once again, okay, they have aligned it, okay, so they could basically find or align it based on functional residues okay, or conserved region. Because a lot of proteins, whereby when they have domains, okay, so homologous proteins, okay, the domains are mostly conserved so they could align it based on that apart from that they also use multiple sequence alignment which you have known from previously from the genomics part and there are also certain things that they do okay by deletion again okay, by shifting the gaps because we know that for them to align again okay, usually when you get your multiple sequence alignment you see that there are gaps in between so in alignment construction again okay, by homology modeling usually they would delete again okay, the gap okay and then shift it okay so that it will be closer together so this is basically how the alignment correction is being done of course again okay, by the software okay, but the representation is as such okay so in your multiple sequence alignment you can see that okay to make sure that they are aligned okay so there are some gaps introduced okay, in between the sequence just to make sure that they are aligned properly so the alignment again okay, or the misalignment again okay, such as this okay are the ones again okay, that will be shifted or basically try to uh, delete okay, the gaps in between them they are being basically later on just connected a third step is the backbone generation okay? so when the alignment is correct the backbone of the target could be created so this involves coordination of template backbone okay whereby they are copied to the target okay so they copy the backbone of the template to model so it will be easier for them to build up your model later on so when the recipes are identical the side chain coordinates are also copied okay so this is actually followed by the fourth and fifth steps okay so they also okay along the way okay make deletions as discussed okay and of course keep the conserved residues okay so those that are not conserved okay they will more or less kind of like delete it the fourth one is loop modeling so after the sequence have been aligned they are often region which are created by insertion and deletions and of course we know that again okay, there that's where you get gaps in between them these gaps okay 
sometimes are modeled by loop modeling okay which is actually very not so accurate very less accurate again okay, less accuracy so currently there are two main techniques okay, which are used to approach the problem or to account the problem the first one is the database search method okay which involves finding loops from non-protein structure and superimposing them onto the two stem region okay of course the main chain okay. so some specialized programs like fred and basically coda could be used but in a lot of the online version usually they don't have it incorporated the second one is the app initial method so another latin word for you so this would generate many random loops and searches for one that has reasonably low energy and of course okay, it has to okay, get all the psi okay, and omega uh, angles okay, at the allowable region of the ramachandran plot so more or less okay, this is being represented as such, okay, so they try okay, to find okay, where the loops okay, could be or theorize where the loops could be because, as I was saying early on in the earlier, earlier part okay, of this video, that sometimes a loop could be good, it could provide a chance okay, for docking okay, or for interaction. The fifth step is whereby the template is being recognized and initial alignment started. So, this is actually a very important step okay, because. Uh, Protein ligand interaction okay, is usually evaluated at active sites, and of course, protein protein interaction okay, uh, also is being uh, evaluated at the same time. And the contact interface usually lies okay, from the loop, okay, as I was saying earlier on. So, a side chain then could be built by searching every possible confirmation for every torsion angle, which means every twist and turn, as you can see. Okay, so, when they basically bend here and there, okay, so they create torsion angle. So this could select, okay, they, uh, they could select one that has the lowest interaction energy with the neighboring atoms. So a Rathamal library could also be used okay, in such a case, whereby it has all the favorable side chain torsion angles extracted from non-protein crystal structures. So there are other databases for that. And apart from that, you also have several options, such as libraries of preferred Rathamas based upon backbone confirmation. So a lot of uh, databases so homology sequence usually have that incorporated in. So the next step, okay, or the final step, okay, uh, well, I would say final, okay, the model validation is the seventh step, but it is something that is actually extra to create your model. It is up until here, okay. Uh, the seventh step is actually something that needs to be done, but okay, you actually have got your model from after the sixth step. So model optimization is where energy minimization procedure is being conducted on the entire model. So how this is done? Okay, first, adjustment of the relative position of the atoms so that overall conformation of the molecule has the lowest possible energy potential. This is so when they interact, okay, so interaction okay, could be done efficiently, okay, so they could basically uh, perform anabolic or catabolic reaction efficiently. Second, structure moves to lowest energy conformation. Okay, so you know that protein basically conform or they fold around. Okay, so Confirmation actually uses lots of energy, so they try to create structure okay, that have the lowest energy confirmation. The third one is to relieve steric collisions without altering the overall structure, which means that for the nearby loops or twists and turns. Okay? And of course, the last one would be to remove big error. And this is usually done by algorithm from uh, the tools being used, and they vary from one tool to another. So optimization can also be done by molecular dynamic simulation, which is what people normally do. Okay, usually after they have done the homology modeling, they proceed with MD simulation. Uh, so MD, what MD does okay, is that it moves the atoms to the global minimum by applying various simula simulation conditions, such as okay, different temperature, okay, heating and cooling, or sometimes they would consider water molecules okay, that would be available okay, in the condition of simulation. So usually you have a better chance of finding a true structure. And they, we could actually compare okay, the ones that have been uh, modeled or the ones that have been controlled by homology modeling and the ones after uh, MD simulation. So the energy that we are talking about here okay, is actually the stretching energy plus the bending energy plus the torsion energy plus the non-bonded interaction energy. All of them okay, basically takes into account of the energy okay, during the confirmation and whatnot. Okay. And so the best, lowest possible is the best for your model. Oh, 
okay so yeah what i was talking about is actually all this okay so you can see okay, the torsion the angle bending the bond stretching the non-bonded interaction and whatnot okay so those okay basically it okay, creates energy and we want it to be as lowest as possible so the seventh step the final step okay but this is basically where you have got your model so you need to validate your model and this is a crucial step uh i would say a compulsory step so every homology model contains error no model doesn't contain an error okay uh, don't say that okay your model is very perfect okay i make sure that there would be no error no when you do something with a computer there are bound to be some error so why okay because a okay, percentage of sequence identity between template and target okay usually uh you could not achieve 100 percent. believe me okay, unless you are using the same structure okay for both template and also the target okay so okay, because of the dissimilarity of the sequence uh, percentage of sequence identity if it is greater than 90 percent the accuracy of the model can be compared to crystallographic uh, determined structure but if it is less than 30 percent large error would occur so like i said okay, usually uh, when i do or before proceeding okay, with any simulation or the multi models that we have created uh, i would always tell my students okay, so i would actually accept again okay, multi models okay or the percentage of sequence identity from the template to the uh, target okay which is at least 70 percent okay but usually i would like them to be well 85 percent or 80 percent and above usually anything below 70 percent we don't accept that's why i was saying that early on again okay? but sometimes some people well if the protein is actually crucial for you okay even though they have low similarity percentage especially if it is new and you think it might be novel so you just have to accept it okay but this is some of the consequence okay that or the risk that you need to bear in mind okay so if it is less than 30 percent large error will occur because it couldn't be aligned properly and there are bounds to be errors definitely okay it, it couldn't be uh it, you you couldn't basically just uh eliminate okay the error secondly the number of errors in the template itself okay so don't think that the templates that have been uploaded they are great they are without any defect so they would have some error as well so this would contribute okay to the lower number of um, or basically uh your homology mod models okay to be not so perfect as well okay which adding more to the error hence the final model has to be evaluated for checking up okay of the angles okay the chirality the bond strength the close contacts and also the stereochemical properties so there are many validation um tools okay that you can use how much blah would be one of them now so let's have a look okay a bit on the torsion angles of the fire and fly okay so okay yeah actually it's fine i was saying omega just now because the omega and the phi is more or less similar right okay so sorry for that now okay so torsion angle for the phi again okay, because usually we would look well, for me personally, I would look for the psi okay, instead of the phi. Okay, so for the phi and the psi, okay, so you basically just they just turn okay differently. Okay, as you can see over here, for the phi, okay, so it the torsion angle okay is right-handed and of course therefore positive. Okay, so the psi is the other way around. Okay, so it is left-handed and therefore negative. So it's like when you have your hand, of course I couldn't show you here, but okay, when we meet again okay, for the tutorial, I will show you. So when you push your hand, okay, clockwise or uh, anti-clockwise, okay, you can actually get both of them. Okay, so it depends on how you look at it. Okay, if it is in front of you, so if you if the clock okay is moving, uh, like what it should be, okay, which is clockwise, you have the phi angle. If it is moving anti-clockwise, you have the psi angle. So the torsion and torque okay, is actually in phi and psi. Some of them are twisted right handle or uh, basically clockwise, some of them anti-clockwise. Now for the model validation, so there are programs like Modeler, okay, which a lot of people use, even my, my students use, okay, Swiss Model or Schrodinger okay, or 3D Jigsaw could use uh, or Erect. Um, so a successful model actually depends on template selection algorithm use and of course the validation of the model so second opinion okay is could also be done again okay, by for example pdb report okay or what if 
uh, what if it's actually a program again okay, not i just put it just like a, 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 there is a program called what if okay uh, which is basically contains reports again okay, on some of the available models so what about if there are errors in active site okay? if you found that okay, you, or you would have okay, a target active site okay, based on your template okay so once you could see that there are some errors in the active site what i would recommend is that you get new alignment or template because you know that in your active site is whereby you probably want to have it interact with another protein or whereby you want to do a docking okay, with another ligand or with another uh, molecule and if there is no errors of course okay that would be good model okay? and i wouldn't say there would be no errors okay but sometimes you could get as high as up until 99 percent of uh, the validation which means that there is very little error okay so from the Ramachandran plot, um, I'm not sure how to explain this as simple as possible in this video because usually in physical class it will be much easier to show you. Um, so basically, okay, in Ramachandran plot, so you have four quadrants over here. Okay, one, two, oops, one, two, three, and four. So and you have okay the phi over here and also the psi, okay, the right-handed and the left-handed. So basically okay a raman channel plot okay so this is actually an explanation okay so you can read on about it okay but what i would like to uh, stress on is that a raman channel plot can be used okay to show a theory which values or confirmation from the psi and the pi okay, are possible for an amino acid residues in the protein and it could also be used to show the empirical distribution of data point okay whereby okay, you would normally see okay, whether whereby when it would have the highest possible error okay or the lowest possible error at certain region along the way or across each and every one of the amino acids in the model all right so let's have a look at the pros and cons of a homology modeling of course everything has two sides so the advantage of the pros of a homology modeling is it can find the location of alpha carbons of carbons of a key residues inside the folded protein so that's the specialty of it so we have come a long, a long way okay, with the technology and they could do that very efficiently. Second, it can help gu to guide the mutagenesis experiments or hypothesize structure function relationship, which is a lot of people do that or perform homology modeling for that purpose. The third one is the positions of cancer regions of the protein surface can help identify putative active sites, binding pockets and ligands for interaction. So the cons or the downside against okay, that, again, there are three as well, to be fair. Homology models are unable to predict confirmations of insertions or deletions or side chain positions with a high level of accuracy. You have to build that up as you have seen in the steps. Second, the models are not useful in modeling and ligand docking studies necessary for drug designing and development processes because usually it has to be followed by x-ray crystallography or nmr third okay, even though it has the downside okay, it may be useful okay, for the same if the sequence identity with the template is created and 70 percent like i said okay, so 70 percent is the desired percentage all right so the conclusion of the homology modeling okay, is that okay, what it is is actually we know that it is the prediction of an unknown structure based on a homologous and known structure why do we do homology modeling just for the fun of it no to answer biological and medical questions when the real structure is unknown especially when do we perform homology modeling when by when you have a template with enough identity which means simply said okay, or simply put it has to have a high percentage similarity with your target protein how do we do homology modeling there are seven steps as have been shown to you previously so there you have it okay the homology modeling so move on to the next video which is on protein talking